This memorable conversation happened right after Cheryl Martin found out she was pregnant. Hurrying to share the good news with her fiancé, the young woman told him about it straight from the doorway. What? What did you just say? Pregnant? How was that even possible? I'm not ready to be a father, and my parents, my parents won't like it. Actually, I've been meaning to tell you for a while now. Peggy and I have been having a relationship for two months. Michael blurted out with a sense of his own superiority. How is that? What do you mean? You've been having a relationship? And what about me? Cheryl asked, barely holding back her tears. Unfortunately, it didn't take long for the poor woman to realize the meaning of her fiancé's words. At least now she understood the coldness she had been feeling coming from Michael for the past three weeks, and all his snide comments too. Cheryl stepped outside, slamming the door behind her. A cool, barely perceptible breeze cooled her flushed cheeks. Wiping away her tears, the young woman went over to Mrs. Diaz, who was the only close person she had in this unfriendly city. It's too bad that I never even managed to find Amanda. If she were around, she'd certainly be able to find the right words to support me. And I'm sure she'd know what I should do. Cheryl thought, swallowing the bitter tears. The young woman was sad because Amanda was her sister, who had disappeared after moving to New York a few years ago. Even though Amanda Martin was three years older than her sister Cheryl, everyone they knew thought of them as twins because the two women looked so much alike. It was only their mother, Penelope Martin, who could always tell them apart. The woman knew that her daughters only looked alike, but actually had very different dispositions. Being the older sister, Amanda was a very confident and strong-willed woman who believed that nothing was impossible in life. Cheryl was the exact opposite. She had a very sweet and accommodating disposition and a delicate soul which made her vulnerable in the eyes of the unfriendly and envious people. However, there was no reason to feel jealousy of the Martin sisters. The women lived with their mother in a small town in northern Ohio and were used to the poverty they had lived in from the first day of their lives. The woman's father had died when the older sister was five years old. Oliver Martin's life was taken by a terrible car accident that occurred on a narrow section of the highway on a foggy October morning. The grief of the inconsolable widow turned out to be so strong that the woman was never able to recover from the insidious blow of fate, which took away the love of her life and her support system. To the great disappointment of her daughters, after burying her husband, Penelope Martin began to seek solace at the bottom of the bottle, which slowly but surely pulled her into the abyss of an alcohol addiction. Meanwhile, making a point to demonstrate her care for Amanda and Cheryl, the single mother did her best not to notice how other people in her life changed their opinion of her. Since the family was facing financial difficulties, Cheryl often got bullied by her classmates for having to wear her older sister's hand-me-downs, which were usually bought at thrift stores to begin with. For obvious reasons, things couldn't have continued this way forever. Thus, to the great disappointment of Penelope Martin, Amanda left for New York as soon as she came of age. There, she intended to start a new life, which wouldn't have a place for thrift stores and discount produce from the supermarket. Don't worry, my little sister. As soon as I get settled and get on my feet, I'll come back for you. Amanda promised before leaving. Cheryl's eyes instantly filled with tears, but it didn't bring the teenage girl any relief, but only made her feel even worse. Now, left alone with her alcoholic mother, Cheryl could only grit her teeth and hope for a better tomorrow. Unfortunately, despite Amanda's promise to come back for her sister, she seemed to be in no hurry to do so. At first, Cheryl got regular news from her sister, and then she gradually fell out of touch for some unknown reason. Occasionally, some fragments of rumors would reach the town of Northern Ohio, so the family knew that Amanda was alive and well. Since life with her mother was unbearable, Cheryl decided to follow in her sister's footsteps and go to New York right after her high school graduation. This decision was partly due to the fact that Penelope Martin had finally met a man who managed to convince her to pull herself together and stop drinking. Unfortunately, Cheryl now felt like a third wheel, 
and so she made the decision to leave her father's house. However, Cheryl didn't even know her sister's address in New York, since Amanda never shared any details about her life in the big city. New York met the small-town young woman with the frantic pace of life and an abundance of neon storefronts that amazed the imagination of their scope and diversity. Unfortunately, finding a job turned out to be much harder than Cheryl had naively expected. The woman's job search took her to over a dozen firms before she was finally hired by a cleaning agency that provided cleaning services for their customers. That's when Cheryl met Peggy, who immediately declared that she would be Cheryl's friend. Unlike the naive small town woman, Peggy Simpson was a native New Yorker who gave her some advantage over her friend. Cheryl tried to ignore Peggy's snide comments. Apparently, her new friend was used to proving herself at the expense of others. Thus, when Cheryl met Michael, her friend was out of her mind with envy, and all she could think about was how to break up the couple and steal her friend's boyfriend. Peggy was so desperate to get Michael, mostly because he had wealthy parents who indulged his every whim and provided him with everything he ever wanted from an early age. However, Peggy actually already had a boyfriend at the time, Thomas Green. Much to the woman's disappointment, her boyfriend grew up in a poor family and loved motorcycles more than anything else in the world. How did you get so fortunate? You got yourself a good man there, Peggy said, whining. Deep down, she was sure that she deserved Michael more than her friend did. Why am I the only fortunate one? Happiness isn't about money, Cheryl answered casually. Unfortunately, the naive and pure-hearted Cheryl had no way of knowing that Peggy had been puzzling over how to steal her boyfriend for many days. Instead, Cheryl simply enjoyed her life and preferred to ignore the fact that her friend was showing way too much interest in Michael. The truth only came out now when Michael, without even a shadow of embarrassment, told Cheryl that he was having an affair with her friend. In all the time she spent in New York, Cheryl only managed to make one real friend, Miranda Diaz, who was Cheryl's regular client. The elderly woman immediately felt that Cheryl was her kind of person, and thus she always tried to help her any way she could. And this situation didn't make an exception. Cheryl simply showed up at Mrs. Diaz's doorstep with tears in her eyes, babbling something indistinct about having been betrayed by her fiancé and her best friend. Come on, dear, you shouldn't worry so much over those two. Let's go into the kitchen, Mrs. Diaz said, hugging her guest. Then, having placed a cup of hot tea in front of her guest, the elderly woman prepared to listen to Cheryl's story. Needless to say, the story of the unfortunate young woman made a very strong impression on her. Yeah, this really is a betrayal. Given the situation, I think you better stay here with me and I'll see what I can do to try and help you find your older sister," said Mrs. Diaz, frowning. In response to the old lady's suggestions, Cheryl gave the compassionate woman a look of boundless gratitude. Thank you was the only thing the woman managed to squeeze out of herself. But Miranda Diaz just brushed it off and took out her old notebook, which had the phone numbers of the people she needed. Fortunately, she managed to find the number she was looking for rather quickly. It was a private investigator, a former colleague of the late husband of Mrs. Diaz. After listening carefully to the elderly woman, Marlon Patterson felt sorry for Cheryl and promised to do his best to help. However, the private detective immediately warned them that in the event that Amanda had changed her name, the search would take a long time. Days turned into weeks, which turned into months. Much to Cheryl's disappointment, the search for her sister still didn't yield any results. But when the pregnant woman was already feeling desperate, the private detective finally managed to find Amanda. By this time, Cheryl was already showing, making it obvious to the entire world that she would soon become a mother. Moreover, rumors of the upcoming wedding of Michael and Peggy spread quickly around the town. The couple shamelessly flaunted their love for everyone to see. As it turned out, Amanda had actually changed her last name and had been living in the suburbs of New York all this time. 
she got married and her husband was in the witness protection program, so the family had to keep their location secret. Thanks to the efforts of the private investigator, Marlon Patterson, the sisters got to see each other for the first time in several years. They met at Mrs. Diaz's house and their joy knew no bounds. Oh dear, I see you didn't waste your time, said Amanda, alluding to the rounded belly of her younger sister. Cheryl turned pale in response and wiped away a tear that rushed down her face. God, you really do look identical. Mrs. Diaz hastened to break the awkward silence. Then the older woman took Amanda's hand and pulled her aside. There, Mrs. Diaz bluntly told the older sister about the misfortune that had befallen her sister. Mrs. Diaz couldn't help but notice a flash of righteous anger in Amanda's eyes. At such moments, Amanda was very decisive and completely unlike her younger sister, who had been soft and vulnerable since childhood. Finally, having taken her rage under control, Amanda pulled herself together and said, I think I know how to teach those awful people a lesson. Mrs. Diaz shrugged her shoulders in response and hurried to change the subject of the conversation. But the elderly woman didn't know Amanda, who was very protective of her younger sister and couldn't just let the situation go. Therefore, without saying a word to anyone, the woman set about to implement her plan. Amanda decided to take advantage of her striking resemblance to her younger sister and appear at the wedding of Michael and Peggy pretending to be Cheryl. To be able to do that, Amanda secured herself an invitation to the wedding by calling Peggy and bluntly asking for it. Peggy promised her an invitation, but Amanda was sure that she only agreed to it to be able to humiliate Cheryl in front of all her guests. What she wanted most was to show the dreadful couple that despite everything that happened, Cheryl was living a great life and even better than before. In order to make her entrance even more spectacular, Amanda persuaded Peggy's ex-boyfriend to also take part in her ruse. Amanda thought it was a good idea because having chosen rich Michael over poor Thomas, the young woman was very mean and disrespectful to her then boyfriend. Amanda intended to use Peggy's offended ex-boyfriend to avenge the humiliation of her younger sister. Thus, Amanda made her entrance in the middle of the wedding ceremony, accompanied by Thomas dressed in an expensive suit, causing a loud murmur among all the attendees. Look, it's Cheryl. She looks so good. A quiet whisper swept through the hall. And when the newlyweds turned around and saw the elegantly dressed Amanda standing next to Thomas, their surprise knew no bounds. Cheryl, is that you? What happened to your belly? Peggy asked incredulously and impulsively straightened her veil, which had strayed to the side. Instead of responding, Amanda only grinned silently and stared into Michael's eyes. He was obviously feeling uncomfortable and didn't know how to act. Michael then pulled himself together and muttered angrily through his teeth. You didn't waste any time, did you? And what did you expect, honey? You were cheating on me with my best friend over a month, and I was supposed to stay faithful to you after we broke up? Never mind, I didn't come here to make a scene or ruin your wedding. I wanted to wish you and Peggy a long and happy life together. Amanda answered, making sure that every guest could hear their conversation. After her words, the newlyweds turned even more pale and felt extremely uncomfortable. Apparently, most of the guests had no idea that Michael and Peggy had an affair behind Cheryl's back, thinking that they only started dating after Michael and Cheryl had broken up. But now that the truth was out, the celebration was hopelessly ruined. The newlyweds kept feeling the condemning looks of their guests, which turned the wedding into an absurd charade. Eventually, the tension caused Peggy and Michael to get into a fight, which amused their guests and made the wedding even more ridiculous. Meanwhile, Thomas and Amanda returned to Mrs. Diaz's house, where the woman had already let Cheryl in on her sister's plan. Well, sister, I think those two will remember this lesson for a long time. And what you need to do now is take care of yourself and start a new life, Amanda said, hugging her sister. Cheryl smiled and stroked her belly in response. She had recently had an ultrasound done, 
and learned that she was expecting twin girls. Surrounded by her beloved sister and true friends, the expectant mother found herself hopeful and truly happy. For the first time in several months, Cheryl believed that everything would be fine. She was confident that the future only held success and happiness for her, and that she would never have to face betrayal in her life ever again.